Have you ever considered that we are not alone? I mean, of course, over the past decade, we've been fed the idea of aliens, and at this point, it's almost as if someone wants us to believe in aliens from outer space. I've said this in other videos, we do not fully accept the whole ancient astronauts theory, as this perspective belongs to the Big Bang cosmology. Or any one theory for that matter, we're just exploring ideas. In this video, we're going to cover the concept of non-human races from a more spiritual perspective. You could say metaphysical or occult, but we're going to swap the idea that these are beings from other planets and replace it with the concept of spiritual entities. In our ancient myths, there are many stories of non-humanoid beings coexisting in this reality. Where have they gone? Why don't we have any hard proof? In short, we're clueless. Human consciousness is limited in this day and age and can only perceive but a fraction of what exists. We have completely programmed our minds to a world that doesn't make sense at all. And I know many can follow this material without this explanation, but I think it's necessary and also expands the understanding to others who may have a hard time balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain. We're in a trip, a dream. We have forgotten the power of the word, the power of visualization. The matters in which we speak are of spiritual realities, not physical. The modern mainstream scientist is the epitome of left brain thinking. All that is real is that which is immediately provable. What they don't understand is that some experiences must be earned. Some faculties have to be developed in order to see these non-humanoid beings or spirits around us all the time. Okay, so this video is spread out into two parts. We have non-humanoid beings that used to exist on this physical plane with us, and then we're going to move on to beings that still live in this dimension, just on another plane of existence. And we'll go over how you can contact them and communicate with them. Giants. The concept of giants is heavily embedded into our collective consciousness. One way or another, there's no doubt that many myths share this common theme. The fallen ones who terraformed our realm subjects of giants is suppressed because it blows to pieces a certain theory that we're taught rigorously in schools. Giants are a product of the fallen angels mating with man, creating a hybrid human race, and many other races as well. In Native American legends, the giants are attempting to create a portal into this realm. They live beneath this physical plane and are somewhat trapped. During certain energetic events, there is enough power in the ether that this becomes possible and they are planning on coming back into our realm. There was a time before the cataclysms in which the giants had their own cities and dominated this world. There are reasons for the flood in the Bible. God was disgusted with his own creation when he saw all the hybrids that lived on this physical plane. So Saturn or Jehovah tried again. This is also connected to the Phoenicians. Were they some type of hybrid race that survived the flood? Is this why they so diligently worshipped Baal, the Black Sun, Saturn? These giants are spread out throughout the world. You have legends of black giants, red-haired giants, and many ancient oriental legends speak of giants as well. Now, we're talking about the hybrid giants that remained after this great cataclysm, which probably wasn't that long ago. But there's also the titans, which are the giants that terraformed our Earth which led to the creation of mountains and strange rock formations around the world. These hybrids left their mark, and there are many cases throughout history where skeletal remains are found. Many who are atheists may discredit the Bible completely, but I find it interesting that there is a lot of biblical literature to support these claims. During this time, there were many advanced human races existing on this earth. This is the story of what we know as Atlantis. I know you guys remember that spirit science video where they covered Atlantis and Mars where they said that a certain tribe was from another planet. Well, that's what I was trying to say with the Phoenicians to a certain degree, but I find this topic interesting because this special tribe believes that they're from another realm. Atlantis was the Golden Age, the Garden of Eden. The story is a symbol for us being embedded with a snake, a hybrid being. It also represents our fall into matter. After dark magicians took over the earth and cataclysms took place, human consciousness shifted into a lower field of perception. Here is what we can divide giants into. The Nephilim, or in other words, the Titans. Giants, as in the earlier stages of the human body as it shifted through the various ages. And then, giant hybrids. Evidence for giants, hybrids. We are left with the remains of many of these races of giant humans. 
there's even evidence to suggest that there were entire civilizations of giants. The Anakim were a race of giants that are described in the Bible. The Rephaim are another race of giants described by the Bible. Rephaim can mean inhabitants of the underworld as well. We take these references literally, but it may be that something else is going on here. The ancestors to the Phoenicians could have been giants, the ones who built all this architecture. These giant ancient human races, or what we know as the Atlanteans, they were much taller, and their ancestors, the Hyperboreans and Polarians, were even larger. The newer races become increasingly smaller. After all the different cataclysms, it's like we spawned and were confused to what's going on. All that remained were ruins, and also a few of the older races of giant humans survived the cataclysm. This is what we have. The advanced giants with superior brain function, and then we have the savage giants like we talked about in Tartaria Explained Part 3. One group saved the knowledge from the previous age, but there were many different cultures and races and different beings that survived this catastrophe in many ways, and you can also assume that there was a great shift in the manner in which our reality functioned after the plasma event. We had a complete shift. Not to go too deep, but we all know about the Flood, right? Science refers to it as the Younger Dryas period, but there have been many more cataclysms far more recent, from comet catastrophes to major earthquakes and cataclysms of fire and plasma. Dryas are referenced throughout all of human literature. There's no doubt that this concept has had an impact on our collective consciousness, but the remnants of these giants have been found and science consciously chooses to suppress it. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of the countless newspaper reports on giant skeletons. One could say that this is not solid evidence because there was still fake news back then. However, the sheer amount of articles written about it does seem pretty interesting. Especially the ones talking about the Smithsonian taking the bones never to be seen again. There are mounds throughout America where many reports say giants were excavated. It's also interesting that the legends of many Native American tribes report the same thing that we talk about here on this channel. In the history of Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Natchez Indians, the tradition of the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee, and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in the Mississippi and their migration from the west. Their tradition states that the Nahulu race of giants was of a wonderful stature. Nahulu came to be used to describe all fair-skinned people but it originally referred specifically to a giant white race with whom the Choctaw came in contact with when they first crossed the Mississippi River. The Nahulu, or white giants, were also known to be cannibals. Hmm. Here is an account from the Chief Rolling Thunder of the Comanches. Innumerable moons ago, a race of white men, 10 feet high, and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living here, inhabited a large range of country extending from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their populous cities situated in the intervening valleys. They excelled every other nation which was flourished, either before or since, in all manner of cunning handicraft, were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. Compared with them, the pale faces of the present day were pygmies in both art and arms. My take on this is that these are the advanced race that lived in America before us. These are the people who actually built our most popular cities. The race of white, red-haired, fair giants that were very advanced, but then in other legends, they're described exactly the same, but they're cannibals. Are these legends referring to the same people? And what we're actually looking at is how this race deteriorated here in America over time. This is another topic, but something interesting for the Tartaria peeps. Navajo legends documented by Dr. Donald Yates writes of the Starnak people of Navajo legend, describing them as a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes, and had strongholds all throughout the Americas. They were either extinguished or went back to the heavens. Okay, so see, this isn't just something we're making up because to be honest, it can be hard to go too deep with people sometimes. They're like, uh, I'm gonna need to see some references, and it's like, man, it's everywhere. You just have to open your eyes. All of our ancient myths talk about this. Some type of crazy cataclysm, where beings were being extinguished or vanishing into thin air. Yeah, it's insane, but think about it. What do we really know? The world is insane and the rabbit hole is deep. You just gotta be willing to look. 
In our first video on giants, we discussed the Paiute Indians and their oral tradition of the red-haired cannibals who lived in what is known now as Lovelock Cave in Nevada. But you see, this is the constant theme of ancient ancestors coming out of the caves or from the underworld. Well, maybe there was a cataclysm, it went dark for a couple years, and only a few survivors remained by going in caves. This led to barbarism. Another famous case is the story of the giants of Patagonia. The first European to sail down the South American East Coast was Hernando de Magallanes, Magellan. In 1520, Spain had already started to explore the new land that they found to the west of the Atlantic Ocean. Magellan, a Portuguese, was trying to find a new route to the Spice Islands, Moluccas, in northern Indonesia. When he reached the southern part of what now is Argentina, on an inlet he named San Julian, he encountered very tall people, up to 11 feet in height. Wasn't the only one to encounter the Patagonian giants either. The English and the Dutch followed and they all saw giants, 11 feet tall. For over a period of 250 years, the sailors visiting the land of Patagonia would tell stories of seeing giants. Even older maps added the legend by adding region of giants to the area. If you consider this with the legends around the Americas, it becomes very clear that there was some type of race of giants existing. This has only recently become popular after a long period of this knowledge being suppressed. Even the explorers of the west coast of America report something similar. When Francisco Pizarro of Spain was the first European to sail down the west coast of South America from Panama, in 1527 he managed, by trickery, guns, and his few soldiers, to take the Inca capital. He reportedly saw very tall Inca kings and their families who were white-skinned and looked European. Even the legends of ancient Peru insist that there once lived a mighty giant race there. The historian Glenn Kimball, PhD, photographed the mummies of two of these giant men in Lima, Peru in 1969. These mummies have been measured to be nine and a half feet long. Their golden gloves are approximately 10 inches long. They're also not mutations. This is not just random. There were two giants side by side. This was a race of giants that existed in Peru. Even National Geographic funded an expedition in 1997 that unearthed a series of tombs rich with the bones of 1500 year old, unusually tall young men. They ran that 2001 issue as Tomb of the Giants, unearthed, but what they ended up saying is that they were suffering from Marfan Syndrome, and they were really only 6 feet tall. No further discussion now, it's suppressed. They really wanted to show you proof for giants, they would shine the light at the amazing ruins at Tijuanaco and the perfectly carved megalithic stones of Pumapunku. These sites destroy the history we have been told, but National Geographic is more than willing to advertise these sites as being created by ancient aliens. Yeah, well, they're full of it. They don't want you to look into the esoteric origins of the human race. Even Francisco Pizarro was told by the Inca that Tiahuanaco had been built by a race of giants. One of the largest stones to be moved was 400 tons and was transported to Tiahuanaco from a quarry over 200 miles away. It is more incredible when one realizes the route of transport was through a mountain range up to 15,000 feet. Don Cieza de Leon and Agustin de Zarate published texts on South America giants in 1553 and 1555 saying, the native traditions told the incoming Spanish that the giants came to America on raft-like boats. There was also no woman on these boats. These giants were said to have dug deep wells for water that still exist today. In the summer of 1931, Monsignor F. Linati organized an expedition into the jungles of San Augustine. He found traces of a very ancient South American empire known to the old British buccaneers of the 17th century. These men were giants who had knowledge of electricity, which they used in various forms. This is interesting when you take into consideration the electric universe theory. The sun being a giant ball of energy, it's connected to all living beings through plasma and aether. It's possible that these giants were tapping into a different type of electricity. They could have had charged water that then led to the ability to soften stone, using sites like Pumapunku, or were they tapping into the Earth's telluric currents or ley lines? Maybe this is some human construction from an age ago where they were very technologically advanced. Maybe the Nazca lines have something to do with this as well, this old world grid. It's interesting legends say that giants come from the sky and built Pumapungu in one day, but these aren't aliens. I would say that it's a previous race of humans who were very advanced and were around 10 feet in height. No, I don't think they were hybrids. We are all hybrids. We all come from the Nephilim. Nephilim created this realm. We are used to the typical aliens theory, 
or even fallen angels, but what does this all mean? They are the spiritual titans responsible for the creation of the physical world. They are invisible forces that we have lost the ability to see and experience as a collective. They have a physical manifestation, we call them planets. They are luminaries, the light and symbol for the power behind the result. Each king demon has its domain on each one of these planets. They each rule an army of lesser spirits and demons. It's kind of like a pyramid structure, where say, Saturn represents business, death, and all the attributes under him, like aging, mortgage, would be different demons in Saturn's army. It's like a trunk where the base is the main power and the branches are the different extensions and variations of that main base power. This is the Western approach. There are many other entities that have been given to these different powers, but the same concept applies. The Nephilim are a group of demons or metaphysical beings, usually with negative intentions, who resided in this chaos like a blank canvas and one of them was like, hey, I'm God. We call this Lucifer and all these other demons or archons, the other planets were like, oh, wow, okay. There was nothing else there. Reality was nothing you could say. Now, this is just a womb that these beings were nesting in. I'm sure there are many other egg realities that we can experience, but for now, let's just keep it simple. So, they basically all follow Saturn and he creates this sub-realm. This is the material realm that we live in. It's a fallen state of light where death exists. This is the separation of the waters. We have a realm amidst the chaos. Now, this video is not going to go completely over the creation story. That'd be a good video though, but let's move along to understand more about this whole giants thing. The original man was larger than modern day humans. Saturn did not create us. There is a deeper power beyond the chaos that is wisdom and light. In short, Sophia tricked Saturn into creating the human being. What ended up happening is we had more power than the Nephilim. They lack emotion and creativity for they deny the mother, and they grew jealous of our intelligence. Decided to alter our body, our brains, and we became like children and could no longer connect as easily with our inner selves. They only had so much power, for the Nephilim, or giants, reside inside of us. We must expand our view and remove the word I from our language. Ego is just a tool, it's not the true self. All they can do is chicory and deception. Now, these beings manifesting with physical bodies could come into our realm at some point. Whether that has changed or we just don't have the capabilities to see it is another matter. However, at one point, these beings altered the human body. They wanted to create a new human being, but this just resulted in a variety of crazy, insane hybrids. In the Bible, they say that these angels came down and mated with the women. It also hints towards them committing even more graphic crimes such as mating with animals. So we have to kind of get out of our head that these are just normal humans with wings. These are strange metaphysical beings that are willing to do whatever they can to manipulate and experience physical matter and its sensations. The subjects of hybrids in the Bible is interesting because if you're a Bible believer, then you kind of have to believe in hybrids. Jude chapter 1 verse 6 through 8. And the angels, which kept not their first state, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So the angels left heaven and came into the physical realm. The very next verse says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Verse 8, Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And also, flesh is not just human, it means animal, so the Bible is saying that this flesh is strange or different. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39, we can verify this. Quote, All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. And in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23 through 24, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast or defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Confusion and strange are pretty similar in meaning. Verse 24, Defile not ye yourself in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And then of course we have the famous Genesis 6 quote, 
The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall now always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, man being reference is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Okay, so if you still don't see the connection again, here is the reference to flesh and animals yet again. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So these hybrids were so bad that in the Bible, God was like, hmm, maybe I made a mistake and I need to destroy all the living animals. Yep, this resulted in satyrs, mermaids, giants, reptilians, and many more oddities that we have never even got to naming. If you're someone who is like, oh, well, the Bible's not really a great point. It's just a book. Look, that's a good point if you're 15 and someone's being super pushy about Jesus or something, but that's not what this is. We're talking about scripture. Once you look into these different topics, it becomes evident that a lot of the Bible is based on truth and holds hidden allegorical significance as well. Don't throw everything out just because you're an atheist or a self-proclaimed rational thinker. Once you can get past that, the scriptures that weren't included in the Bible make it even more clear to the truth that lies within these ancient texts. The Bible then says that the cataclysm came to get rid of these hybrid beings. Maybe they survived by going underground. This brings us to non-humanoid races. I first came across this when I was younger and with David Icke. I'm sure most of you already know who this is, but I separate myself from the whole alien races circles because I'm not of the opinion that these beings come from other terrestrial planets. That's just our modern attempt to merge science and our current cosmology with these esoteric truths. There are many non-humanoid beings, and sure, many legends talk about beings coming from the sky. But again, that doesn't mean planets, and it also doesn't mean they traveled through space to come visit Earth. The origins of these hybrid beings are esoteric in nature. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are some exceptions. Maybe Dogman is some type of experiment. But I do not think all non-humanoid beings from encounters and legends are some genetic experiment. There's something else going on here. Also, notice how many of these encounters with Dogman and Skinwalkers are somewhat spiritual in nature. These experiences don't abide by physical laws. Same for alien abductions. They're very reminiscent of OBEs in the dream realm. You could keep saying this connection with all the other alien races as well. I remember when I first learned about all this stuff, um, Bashar was one of my first rabbit holes that I felt very attracted to. He would talk about these beings in the universe like mantids, the Nordic aliens, the reptilians, and all sorts of fascinating stuff. I even remember these feline beings as well, but this was all from a sci-fi perspective of the universe. Tell me why all these beings are advanced in consciousness. Why do most of these races have some type of spiritual advancement over us? Bashar would say that he was channeling a future him, and this future him was quasi-physical in nature, some type of light being. Again, we're beginning to merge with spiritual realities again. If I could elaborate, instead of them being from some terrestrial planet in the random infinite universe, they are beings that exist in the infinite potential of the God mind. This isn't really simple to explain, but simple in nature. There are many realities of mind, but one earth, one physical realm, as above, so below. There are smaller God inside of a bigger God. Within this mechanism, all potential exists. So don't get me wrong, I'm all for parallel realities. I'm sure there are many different versions of earth that we could experience, maybe through different lifetimes or whatever. Look, the best way to see this is the world revolves around you. The whole aliens from outer space theory, it takes away from that. It takes away from the universe revolving around your being. Hence, these beings are actually from higher realms, from a time before we were physical, like the myths of the Greeks and Egyptians. There may have been a time before the cataclysms that the Earth was quasi-physical, or some type of astral realm. These are the beginnings of the physical world, because we seem to think of everything in terms of reproduction instead of reflection. The mating is an allegory for these spiritual forces manifesting into these different God-created beings.
If you know about Gnostic literature, Saturn had thought he created the original man, but it was lifeless. He was not the one to give it fire. Thus, the creation of all of God's original beings were not of the Archons. They decided to go down and somewhat take over this body. They came into the body of the original man, and remember, we're talking about spiritual realities, so came into doesn't really explain what I'm talking about, but basically, in order to have control of man, they made a new man that was forced to be in alignment with the principle of each of these forces. These forces, or Archons, or Nephilim, each manifested into a different body part, an aspect of the mind and personality. This is what the Zodiac is, the whole idea of destiny, why do you think they have myths about the gods? It's the same in every culture. They're connected to the planets. What's the connection? Well, Zeus and the others are a metaphor for the secret esoteric teachings of the history of consciousness. It slowly became more grossly material. The result of experimentation from the gods on primal man and beast resulted in almost every possible combination you can imagine. What are you imagining when you imagine it? This could be one of the main reasons that the Cataclysm came. But that's not to say that they still don't exist. There are many legends that tell of underground cities and beings. It's very possible that many beings just went to the underground realm. Hell, the plane below, where they stay imprisoned. This is because before the Cataclysm, there was a different sun, Saturn. Then after the event, we got a new sun, which many of these beings cannot exist under. They are attempting to come through a portal in which once again, they will exist on this material plane. Human Sizes Throughout the Ages The first human form was ethereal, it was much larger than our modern form. We have been led to believe that we evolved from monkeys, and any other theory completely gets thrown out in scientific circles. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that human antiquity is much older than we are led to believe. We honestly don't have a clue, we could be in an infinite loop, but you will get people who will find it so crazy that you don't follow their approved theories. I've actually had this happen before where people were like, wait, you don't believe in evolution? And I was like, nah, human antiquity goes way back. The idea of advanced ancient civilizations, Atlantis, then we slowly de-evolved into a lower vibration of spirit. In schools, they teach a dichotomy of brain, left versus right, science versus God. And we grow up basically believing nothing. We're taught that we evolved from monkeys and that this whole world is random. Evolution belongs to the cosmology of Big Bang, meaning nothing became something. And then all of a sudden, somehow life formed, giving birth to intelligent cells that began spontaneously creating all the life on the planet, including the human body and mind. What we are not taught is an intelligently created realm in which everything has meaning and you are the most important one in it. When you're in trouble, almost everyone will pray to God. I mean, shoot, even Rick Sanchez did it. It's ingrained in our consciousness. He looks at me and he's like, uh, that was the realest thing I've ever heard. And it's like, yeah, because most people never question these things. This could be new territory for many people, so I'll do my best to cover the basics. Man was created in the image of God. When we were first created, this was before Nephilim entered the realm. Everything in the past was giant. We had giant trees, giant birds, giant fruits. Our planet had more oxygen. It's also said in ancient legends that we had a different sun. So it could be that maybe our bodies were blue in this age because of our atmospheric conditions and from the color of the sun. In H.P. Blavatsky's work, The Secret Doctrine, she goes through different races of man. The first race is the Polarians. I find it interesting that they're also said to be blue. When we speak of gods and these Nephilim, they are taking part in the creation of the lower man. The first man is God, the heavenly man. Then the Nephilim are the aspects of our mind. You can see the same mystical lore and esoteric personifications into all of the popular myths of humanity. You find them in the Vedas, the Puranas, Greek myths, Norse legend, Egyptian, and in Kabbalah. Every man is a double, as above, so below. This is a secret that many have yet to see from the allegory. The Nephilim, or the giants, attempted to create man but could not do so without fire. They failed to animate the statue, intellectually. The life was breathed into Adam through the heavenly man or heavenly father, the higher self. You and every animal have more than one body, an astral double, and it is this astral body that was the first primitive man. The Nephilim created a new man. That was the material realm and body, and they did this by creating an even lower version of themselves. 
This is how magic works. That's why it's an esoteric secret, and they teach this as literal giants. Your higher self is God, or in other words, divine intelligence, literally, and the Nephilim are beings that belong to your higher self. Don't get confused with what I'm saying, you have to consider many different things. This is what imagination or intuition or channeling is. You're forming a communication with your higher self. This is also why Jesus had more power than the Archons. The Archons were creating a realm in which we would keep recycling in this realm and never returning to our higher estate so that we constantly stay like cattle in their dominion. But Jesus could conquer over these beings and somehow rearranged everything. The Nephilim were blind to Jesus because he possessed this divine light, a light brighter and higher than they so they could not see, and so Jesus had power over them. I'll include some references, but most of this type of thinking comes from the Gnostics. Look into the Nag Hammadi. If we look into occult literature, we'll see a similar pattern specifically in Western ritual magic. Through different occult methods, we can obtain the divinity and demand the forces of nature. That's what a magician is. Think of it like this. Okay, I'm me. Hi. And all of a sudden, you expand, and now you're this omnipresent moment, and you can know all things. That's what we're talking about here the removal of ego to obtain the higher realms and power of our own inner divine light. Now that we've gotten this deep into esoteric philosophy, we can start to understand how it may be possible to contact these giants, titans, planets, sephiroths, angels. They're just aspects of creation, and sure, they may have had a physical manifestation in this plane, but most of this is magical secrets hidden in allegory. Okay, so what are hybrids? We are the hybrids. That's what the allegory is. The angels fell from heaven and mated with man. How do angels mate with men? And what is an angel? Angel means spirit. So how does a spirit mate with a man? It doesn't. It merges with it, aka hybrid. This is a creation story, an allegory. These giants that existed and many other races are all creations of these spirit beings. There was an original man, upper astral body, or you could even say mental body, and then one day, these lower beings, most likely in the lower astral, began creating the form of man, but it was lifeless. Then, from the higher realm, the mental body, the power of the original man came into being. This made the gods cocky, thinking they created such a perfect being, until they realized that it was quite intelligent, and they began to realize it had more power than them. So they became jealous, and casted the form down into another form that they constructed, the material realm what the hybrid is, this material body and all the variations that these archons have put us through. That is what created the different root races of man and races of beast. Also has to do with an understanding of spirit, the concept of multiple bodies and parallel realms. Now that we can see it from a different perspective, we can start to understand that if giants did exist, then that would blow evolution out of the water. So what other theory are we left with? We must have slowly de-evolved. I want to give a shout out to Kern Galloglass. He sent me an email asking a bunch of great questions and it was so good that I was like, you know, it would just be better to make a video and kind of like lay it all out. So I really appreciate you taking the time to email and ask me all your questions. I mean, it really does make a difference. And what I'd like to do is I think at the end of each video, I want to give a shout out to like my favorite comment or an email that I find very uh, inspiring or I just want to start you know giving you guys more light because a lot of the times you guys are really influencing how these videos are made so I really appreciate all the comments appreciate all the support and it's just been really great so I really appreciate it but yeah that'll be all for this video we have much more we could say so follow us on our journey as we continue to be more curious may our minds be unveiled let go of everything you think to be true Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?